Before the Big Bang, or what happened before that event, is a tricky question. Scientists have to be precise with language. If we define the Big Bang accurately as the moment when the universe was very hot and very dense, that's undeniable since we observe it when we look into the sky. Our best theory for how the universe reached that state is called inflation, suggesting there was a phase before that dense, hot universe we know as the Big Bang. However, this pre-Big Bang state has left scientists both astounded and unsettled. According to physicist Brian Cox, before the Big Bang, the universe was cold, empty, and expanding incredibly fast. This rapid expansion slowed, stopped, and the energy driving it was released into space, heating everything up and creating particles that eventually formed everything in our universe. That moment is what we call the Big Bang. But why did this prior state leave scientists so disturbed? Let's dig deeper. There is an advanced version of this inflation theory called eternal inflation. In this model, inflation doesn't just end. It continues indefinitely in some regions while stopping in others, creating countless big bangs in isolated pockets of the universe. Imagine the fabric of space stretching endlessly, pausing in certain patches to allow a big bang-like event to happen. Each of these patches becomes a universe of its own, and ours is merely one among countless others in this inflationary multiverse. The idea of absolute nothingness in the vast cosmos seems theoretical rather than real. Even if we removed all energy from the universe, it wouldn't truly be empty. Right now, the universe contains matter, radiation, antimatter, neutrinos, dark matter, and dark energy. If we were to strip all of that away, something would still persist. This phenomenon shows that the universe defies our concept of complete emptiness. Even with no particles or energy, expansion would continue, producing radiation. This peculiar property of the universe confounds scientists. It appears as though the universe cannot grasp our concept of true emptiness. But could the universe originate from nothing? It's unlikely, as something always persists. Even without particles, photons, or quanta, an empty space filled only with quantum fields remains. Fundamental constants and the laws of physics endure with a finite, non-zero point energy present. This level of nothingness is the closest approximation we have to empty space. Beyond this state, envisioning an even more than nothing, like condition lacks physical reality and defies scientific principles. Thus, while true emptiness does not exist, the reason why remains a mystery. The observable universe teems with stars, galaxies, cosmic rays, and radiation from both starlight and the remnant of the Big Bang. With advancements in observation, we might detect additional cosmic signals, including gravitational waves from moving masses, signals from dark matter, and perspectives on black holes. The universe we observe is dynamic, not static. With a fabric of space-time expanding, the universe doesn't only get larger, it grows colder. As light stretches to longer wavelengths, it shifts toward lower energy and cooler temperatures. In the past, the universe was hotter. In the future, it will grow colder still. This dynamic shift leads objects with mass or energy to cluster, forming a vast cosmic web. Remove all energy, and empty space itself would remain, expanding under the laws of physics and influenced by quantum fields. This state is the closest we come to absolute nothingness, yet it still holds the specific physical principles. A physicist would note that taking away anything more would yield an unrealistically empty state, no longer resembling the cosmos we know. This suggests that even in a universe devoid of matter, dark energy, and quantum fields, the zero-point energy of space could not truly reach zero. As the universe continues to expand and cool, a future awaits where radiation will outlast all forms of matter, with dark energy taking over as the dominant influence. Similarly, in the distant past, something other than matter or radiation held control during the inflation phase, predating the hot Big Bang. At that time, the universe experienced rapid, relentless expansion driven by inflation field energy, similar to dark energy, but exponentially stronger. This raises questions. 
If inflation continues indefinitely, what was the actual beginning of our universe? In the 20th century, for discoveries shaped our current understanding. Alexander Friedman's work on general relativity demonstrated that a universe filled uniformly with matter and energy cannot remain static. Henrietta Leavitt's period luminosity relation allowed us to measure the universe's scale. Vesto Slipher observed galaxies moving away from us, and Edwin Hubble identified stars in distant galaxies, confirming their vast distances. These insights combine to shape the theory of an expanding universe, with space stretching, matter thinning, and light cooling over time. By tracing this backward, scientists realize that the universe must have once been hot, dense, and incredibly small. This understanding forms the core of the Big Bang Theory, which has become the leading explanation for our early universe. Since the discovery of cosmic microwave background radiation in the 1960s, the Big Bang Theory's dominance began to wane with discoveries of unresolved issues like the horizon problem, flatness, and the absence of ancient relics. Alan Goose's inflation theory in 1980 provided solutions to these issues, proposing a phase of intense, rapid expansion where the universe's energy existed in space itself, explaining the uniformity of the universe. Inflation's mechanisms also prevented overly high energies that would have created remnants like magnetic monopoles. Inflation theory soon became an alternative to the traditional hot Big Bang model. It suggested how the universe's cosmic structure could stem from quantum fluctuations shaping galaxies and stars. Inflation theory's predictions from the 1980s regarding cosmic structures were later confirmed through cosmic background radiation and large-scale structure data. This lent weight to inflation as a realistic depiction of our early universe. Unlike a singular Big Bang, inflation suggested a rapid expansion preceding the hot Big Bang, challenging our understanding of the universe's beginning. Rewind far enough without inflation, and we reach a singular point of infinite density and temperature. With inflation, however, an exponential growth stretches this back, obscuring any singular origin and instead creating a continuous, fractal-like reality. Eternal inflation proposes that while inflation ceases in certain regions, creating new Big Bangs, it continues indefinitely elsewhere. Quantum fluctuations may allow this inflationary state to persist into the future, further expanding into an ever-growing cosmic landscape. Certain areas where inflation ceases result in a hot Big Bang. However, these regions are far fewer compared to those where inflation persists indefinitely. Notably, no two separate regions with Big Bangs will ever overlap because the expanding universe drives them apart. Despite its appeal, eternal inflation has limitations. It's eternal only into the future, not into the past. In fact, it's been demonstrated that inflationary space-time doesn't extend into the past infinitely and must have originated from a prior, non-inflationary, and possibly singular state. The issue of past time-like incompleteness can't be avoided by considering alternatives like bouncing cosmologies or cyclic cosmologies, as they face similar challenges. However, this doesn't necessarily imply that the universe originated from a singularity. While it could have, it's not a strict necessity. For example, one can envision a space-time resembling the past where inflation takes place by modeling the universe's expansion rate through a scale factor composed of a growing exponential plus a constant rather than just a pure growing exponential. In essence, the hot Big Bang, while our most accurate model of the early universe, wasn't its absolute genesis. There's a limit on how far back we can extract at the temperature and density of the matter and radiation-filled universe. Prior to the hot Big Bang, there existed a period of cosmic inflation which initiated and led to the hot Big Bang. During inflation, space was saturated with energy, devoid of matter and radiation, and expanded exponentially. However, inflation couldn't have persisted indefinitely and must have emerged from some pre-existing, non-inflationary state. Unfortunately, our knowledge of this earlier state is limited. Aside from knowing many things it couldn't have been, we don't live in a universe where matter drifts in empty space. We live in a universe filled with energy fields that interact to form everything we see. When considering the vastness of emptiness, 
the endless void and mortality. It's striking how the idea of nothingness can provoke such fear. Did William Shatner at 90 go on a space journey expecting to find the universe's mysteries, only to realize there was no mystery or grandeur? He encountered only death, witnessing a cold, dark, black void unlike any darkness on Earth. It was overwhelming and all-encompassing. Yet in another paradox of nothingness, Shatner wasn't truly observing a void. Rather, he was looking at a vacuum where a lot was happening that he couldn't see. Quantum field theory is one of the most accurate theories in physics, known for predicting the outcomes of many experiments. According to this theory, the universe is not made of matter floating in empty space, but of energy fields that permeate space and interact, creating everything we observe, including ourselves. Some physicists describe these fields as fluid-like, similar to water in a pool, while others compare them to a room filled with varying levels of energy like a field of distributed heat. These fields are constantly moving due to quantum fluctuations, brief changes in energy, similar to ripples in a wave caused by external forces exciting the particles within the field. For example, an electromagnet can cause changes in an electromagnetic field. Even in their lowest state, known as the vacuum state, fields remain active. Pairs of positive and negative particles continuously borrow energy from the vacuum, briefly appear, and then disappear, returning the energy. These temporary entities are called virtual particles. When the field is excited or at a higher energy level, it has ripples or waves that produce elementary particles that persist and interact with each other, forming the world we know. The type of particles created depends on the field. Different matter particles are associated with specific types of fields, such as electrons, up quarks, down quarks, and neutrinos, which are fundamental components of all atoms. These fields interact through three types of forces, electromagnetism involving photons, the strong nuclear force involving gluons, and the weak nuclear force involving W and Z bosons. According to Cambridge theoretical physicist David Tong, without these force fields, matter particles would drift aimlessly in the universe without interactions or interesting behaviors. Then there's the Higgs field, which Tong compares to molasses spread throughout the universe. The Higgs field gives mass to other particles, stopping them from moving at the speed of light. Tong notes that this comparison is not perfect because it suggests friction, while in reality, different particles interact with the Higgs field in various ways. All fields, including matter and force fields, exist everywhere but interact differently. Some particles in these fields ignore each other while others interact, leading to reactions and complex structures. The collaboration of these fields covers everything we understand and observe, along with much that remains unknown and beyond our perception. Oddly, the creation of matter particles is an exception. For instance, an atom forms when there's enough energy in the quark field to produce quarks that aren't destroyed by antimatter quarks, though the reason for this is not fully understood. Gluons, which are particles related to the strong force, bind with two up quarks and one down quark to form a proton. Gluons then connect protons with neutrons to create a nucleus. Physicists propose that the visible universe consists of remnants that survive the constant creation and destruction of virtual particles. However, the particles making up dark matter are a different issue. Although the universe is full of virtual particles, it doesn't completely negate the idea of nothingness. First, there's the nothingness before the Big Bang, which we don't yet understand. Additionally, this nothingness, made up of vast fields of quantum energy, seems to produce matter and force, leading to the creation of our world. Physicists are still unsure why some elemental particles persisted after the Big Bang. In his book A Universe from Nothing, Lawrence Krauss, a theoretical physicist and cosmologist, argued that the evidence holds the answer. The inherently unstable nature of nothingness produces elementary particles. There's also the idea that the entire universe might be a large virtual particle. The vacuum genesis hypothesis proposes that the universe began as a large fluctuation in the nothingness that preceded it. Although this hasn't been proven, it's an intriguing concept. Ultimately, everything 
you, me, the whole universe amounts to a big bunch of nothingness. Even if you can picture an empty universe, this doesn't match reality. Adhering to the laws of physics is enough to dismiss the idea of a truly empty universe. As long as there is energy within it, even the zero-point energy of the quantum vacuum, there will always be some form of radiation that can't be eliminated. The universe has never been completely empty, and as long as dark energy exists, it never will be. The universe is the way it is, and while we try to understand it as much as we can, we should remain humble in the face of its vast unknowns. My only advice is to embrace the curiosity that drives us to explore, question, and uncover its mysteries. So that's all for this video. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this, so leave them in the comments below and stay tuned for more content like this on our channel, Digital Discoveries.